Hello, welcome to Furious Tea Break. This is the weird side channel to Furious Driving where we do stuff which doesn't normally quite fit in with the rest of the channel content. For example, this junk in the trunk. This is where you guys send me stuff that you think will be interesting to amuse the rest of the class and we share it here on the show. We haven't done one for a little while because things have been a little bit slow trickling in but I think we've got an awful lot of good stuff to make this quite an interesting episode today. So before we get going I just want to say thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed to this and the main channel then please do hit those buttons. It makes a massive difference to what we can do. If you've not seen the merch store then head over to furiousdriving.co.uk. We've got cool mugs like this, hats like this, stickers, magnets, all kinds of other fun things, calendars for 2023 available right now. Right, so without further ado, as I believe it is essential to say on the internet, let's crack on opening some boxes and we'll start off with a couple of easy ones. The first one, I know it's easy because I bought it, but I wouldn't have bought it if it wasn't for one of the eagle-eyed viewers who spotted this and had remembered me saying a while ago that I really wanted this for my Mini. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I have got a 2001 R50 Mini Cooper pre-production car. And this is the bit of plastic which sits down in front of the gear shift and underneath the radio. So a little pocket down there to pop odds and sods into. And it's an optional extra from new and they're incredibly hard to come by. And it was not the cheapest thing in the world, about 25 or 30 pounds I think it was actually. So a lot of money for a weird bit of plastic that no one else wants, but I wanted it, I've got it. So thank you enormously to the viewer whose name I've forgotten during the time of filming. And as soon as I put the camera down, I will remember your name, really sorry, but thank you <laughs> for tipping me off because this is an essential R50 item for somewhere to put your phone and your Mars bars and you know other paraphernalia of modern life, your glasses. So that is going in the mini very shortly. I should have fitted it weeks ago, but I was waiting to film this. Bye. And that was a badly balanced tray of sockets, which are now underneath everything. I think I was going to buy more sockets. That will actually be easier than trying to find all of those. Okay, now next thing is another one which didn't arrive in the post. If you're not, if you're new to this particular episode, the creak of joy from the boot of the old Rover P P6 V8 is an essential element of this uh, video enterprise. This was handed to me at the NEC Classic uh, show over in the NEC in Birmingham in is it November now? It's a month ago anyway. Yeah, a couple of very lovely Scottish guys who came down and said hello several times. I had my Rover 420 GSI Tourer on the uh, the stand along with um, Ian from Hubnut with his 2CV. This is a 400 Tourer brochure. I, you never see these, they're particularly rare. The cars were sold in minuscule numbers. So this is fabulous mid 90s typography, page layout, photography, all those good things that make it so, so special. It does look good in anthracite black, doesn't it? Rover values say you have a right to drive a car which is different and totally distinctive. A car which is distinguished from all others by its obvious quality and style, by its advanced levels of protection and by its dynamic performance. The new Rover 400 Tourer. We believe that our values reflect your own. Here we go, the sporting stance, as it says in the caption. Not just different, but better, because it's a Rover. Could not agree more. There we go, Nightfire Red, like my car is. Fantastic. Well, of course, that one, the paint hasn't fallen off of that one yet. And this gives you all the different specs. The 2 litre T Series engine, a paragon of smoothness, apparently. The 118 PS 1.6 K Series, 16 valves and programmed fuel injection. Sporting, but incredibly refined. Effortless control. I'm loving this thing. And we've got the uh, Silverstone half leather interior for the uh, GSI. There we go. The Rover 400 was created to reflect your good taste without cramping your style. Yeah. And I love the fact that in the mid 90s, having an airbag was something they illustrated because it's such a novelty and a selling point rather than a given. So, yeah, this is really cool. So the, the trims were 416 SLI, 418 SLD, which is the diesel, and the 420 GSI. A full set of trim specs and the usual work, so brilliant. This is a wonderful accessory to go with my 420 GSI, so thanks guys. Lovely to see you down at the show and thank you for dropping it off to me. They actually found this on another stall for sale and they grabbed it and brought it back over to the stand, which is fantastic. Right, so another thing which was handed to me in person, this, you might be wondering, 
is a large lump of plastic. Yes, it is another large lump of plastic trim. Not for a Mini this time, but for a Volvo. Thank you to Max who had these. Uh, Eagle-eyed viewers have noticed that the door pockets on my Volvo 740 are a bit cracked because it is very, very, very uh, brittle plastic and it doesn't take many shoe thumps in order to break these things. And mine had indeed broken. Uh, certainly badly on the driver's side. I think just a bit cracked on the passenger. So. I need to be taking my doors apart and uh, fitting these things in there. So thank you to Max who had these in his garage for a long time. Really appreciate that. Need to do that in a video very shortly. The, um, now the clutch is fixed on the 740. I can move the thing around and I can actually get that thing into a position where I can open the doors and do that. So that'll be rather fun to sort out. But you'd have to take the entire door cards off and remove them from the back. You can see the screw holes just there, apparently. Big old, very fragile things. You may have seen in other videos, I've been trying to find A and C pillar trim for that car because that's unobtainium. I eventually found A pillar trim for the driver's side. Not in, in basically the same grey as that rather than the blue I wanted, but I'll take that over anything. If anyone's got a blue C trim pillar uh, trim for the 740 saloon, desperately need it. Now, we can move into things that are not handed to me in person. Now this one, okay, so this one has come from, where does it come from? Belgium. So a viewer in Belgium has sent this over by airmail. I'm sorry if you priority posted this and it's been sat in the car for a few weeks because I've been waiting for enough stuff to arrive. Oh, hello, a Belgian number plate, fantastic. If you are new to this series, you won't know about this, but I am trying to make a number plate wall over in the barn. I've started it in this one. I need to transfer what I've put over there over to the barn because these are fabulous. I'm trying to collect a number plate from every country on the planet. And there are a lot of countries on the planet, it turns out. So it's gonna be a long, long old haul on this one. But we have got a letter with this as well. I haven't got Belgium before, so that is really cool. Oh, quick skim through here. I am a fan of your channel from Belgium. Yes, you're fans across the channel. Hello, guys. Uh, I'm really a fan of your channel since the videos about the Mercedes W123. Ah, so another W123 fan. A lot of people love that Mercedes. I must fix it. And my favorite car par excellence, yeah. He hopes to own one too, and that old girl is coming along quite nicely. If it hadn't been raining today, I'd have been welding it in the drive, but it was raining, so I didn't. So that'll be driving very soon indeed. So this is an authentic Belgian license plate from 1993. That's actually from a Renault 19, a very cool car, quite like them. And he found it for sale on the road in 2022, so not long ago. Uh, bought from an old lady who'd barely used it, and it's a regular daily car. In fact, here is a picture of the Renault 19 itself. In which was nice and silver, and it's absolutely mint, or oh, three-door, mm -hmm. rather nice. This is from Wolf, thank you Wolf. Um, sorry for the spelling mistakes, that was absolutely fantastic spelling, probably better than I could manage, certainly better than I could manage in Belgian. <laughs> so that is absolutely awesome. Thank you Wolf. I'll pop that up there in the background. Stay. Right, let's creak into the, the boot again. Okay, so this one, is from the UK. Big padded envelope. Wonder what's gonna be inside. Aha! Mm. Uh -huh. Mini 25 celebration brochure. Philips Car Audio catalog. Oh, brilliant. I do love vintage car audio. Clarion catalog. Sparkomatic. That's a new one. And Pi. Oh my God, that is so late 80s. Wow. Oh, and also, whatever are these? I'm curious. This looks like it might be a rude thing. It's a high flex. Is that some kind of, oh, it's a polishing glove, perhaps. Polishing glove? I don't know. There's a letter, I will read the letter. That would be an advantage. From Ian, hi Ian. Uh, hi Matt, found a few car audio catalogs from 1983 and a mini 25 year celebration program. Uh, so you're burning your arm on the Rover 2000 exhaust. So here are two Kevlar heat resistant sleeves. Oh, what a brilliant idea. So I'm often hurting myself on hot things on cars. I didn't know that was a thing. So that'll be put in my health and safety pile, which is basically this now, <laughs> and some blasters. So we've got, yeah, zero to 15 stations in seven seconds. Oh wow, if you were learning to drive in the 80s or 90s, these things were absolutely essential uh, accessories on the rear parcel shelf of the car. If you had two speakers, you were even cooler. 
judge your car's performance by what you've got under the dashboard. Wow. These are from the days when you get a separate stereo cassette player as a standalone item. Incredible. Wow, I will bung these on Twitter later. I always say I'm going to do this and I always forget for about a week. At some point in the near future, I will put these on Twitter. Sparkomatic. Which. I don't remember the Sparkomatic range. Curious. It has got push button controls though. And Sparkomatic hi fi speakers. Oh, that is so cool. Now, Clarion, quality audio here. Clarion, still a big, fancy, posh name in the world of car audio. And this, I'm guessing, has got to be, yeah, I think he said 1983, didn't he? So, yeah, you can see the, the square design of these things. The LED rather than LCD uh, display and the brushed metal buttons. Such a cool 1980s look. And check out the fingernails again. So 1980s. Oh, and it gets even better. We've got graphic equalizers. If you were driving a car in the 80s or early 90s and you didn't go weak at the knees at the thought of a graphic equalizer, oh, what were you even doing? Essentially advanced. Oh, we've got, we've got a light green graph grid type pattern on the background. Oh, we are peak 1980s here. Check out that dashboard. All the buttons, a Tesla designer's nightmare. But anyone with any taste, utter joy wow this is some amazing stuff this will definitely be uh, heading to twitter later on fantastic oh what else we got the phillips car audio catalog check out that uh, um i'm gonna say buick on the front cover i think i think it's a buick isn't it with that grill or is it an old snow old or buick so this is a bit more artistic than the other ones less in your face cutting edge future technology the font the very serify font is a very 1980s thing Oh, so cool. AM, FM, stereo combination with auto reverse cassette deck. No DAB here. Night bright illumination. Wow. So cool. So, so cool. And we have the Mini 25 celebration. So, would this be 25 years? Yes, 25 years young today. Austin Mini. Incredibly, this was posted out before I bought my Mini just a few weeks ago. And that is an insanely 1980s, not only haircut, but pose. That photo is, it could not have been taken any time other than the early 80s. Souvenir program, oh, the haircut and those glasses again. Peak 1980s here. The car that gave power to the people. The Austin 7 meets the Austin 7. And especially as I now have the Mini to go with it, I'm doubly excited to have this. And uh, bear in mind, my Mini is not 25 years into the Mini production, it's only 10 years into Mini production. Oh, here we have, uh, the Wolseley, Wolseley version of it. People always criticise the way I say Wolseley because I can't be bothered to pronounce it properly. Oh, fantastic. Thank you, Ian. That's all brilliant stuff. I'm going to put this so it's safe. I won't get broken. Right. What else is in the boot? I love that creak. Okay, we have a large box. This one is going to require the use of a Stanley knife. If I've got one, yes, I have. It's always exciting when it's a large box. You never know what's coming in. Oh, okay. Oh, my word. Christmas has come late, slash early. Well, it came early, but sat in the garage until it was late. Because there's a letter in here, which I'll read in a second. But first of all, prepare to be dazzled. Do you know, my brother, who also had a spectrum same as me, was going to be so jealous when he sees this. Ha ha. That is awesome. What an insane bag, the stuff in it as well, but I'm gonna read the letter first. Oh, check out the note paper as well. Oh my word, that is uh, fantastic. Hi there, Mr. Furious. I've been meaning to send this parcel to you for a while now, and I'm sorry it's taken me a while to open it. I need to appreciate the contents as they take you back to simpler times of my childhood with 1980s. Enjoy, oh, that, mine too, fantastic time. I've been an avid watcher of the channel since 2019. Thank you very much indeed for watching. Uh, I've now had to retire due to illness, having more time to myself, but interesting to say the least. Oh, thanks for watching. Uh, stuck at home with COVID and left me without that human social contact. A lot of people said that. People that did sort of latch into YouTube because it was, it's like a community almost. Oh, you helped me get back into Rovers. Oh, I'm sorry about that. So I don't own a car, but watching you, Ian and Hubnut, Steph and I drive a classic, give me a place to go so I can enjoy the tinkering without having to get your hands dirty, basically. <laughs> 
So anyway, this is, this is from all from Jason. Jason, thank you so much. Let's have an explore of what is inside here. Oh my gold, there's a Spectrum program. Whoa, 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 no, no way. It's an actual, it is a Spectrum. It says, the only authorized full-size recreation of the 1980s personal computer. This is a newly recreated ZX Spectrum. Oh my goodness me. That is amazing, because I have got a genuine original one as well. But this one, though, just runs off a USB. Amazing. And has, I'm tearing things apart, space for a AA battery. Incredible. It's got the proper rubber key feeling on the, on the buttons. That's astonishing. Wow. That is absolutely amazing. And inside we've got the Spectrum Book of Games. Oh, you know, this takes me back to the 1980s. Sitting there for hours and then programming line after line after line, 4,000 lines later you realize you put one asterisk instead of a slash or a colon instead of a semicolon and it doesn't work. The mighty missile. What else have we got in here? Save the whale. Oh God, that's a 1980s game, isn't it? <laughs> I thought it was all books when I opened it and saw the box. And what else have we got in here? Oh, games. Oh, we've got... Pac-Mania, original Pac-Mania. Can you see that? It's a bit dark in here today. And Eye of the Mask. Eye of the Mask, even. There's a comma in there. This is one ninety nine. back when games cost £1.99, not 70 quid. Wow. Okay, oh, I see. What is this? A USB adapter -y thing. Okay, is this like a, a power input? I'm going to have to figure this thing out. Ah, oh, TV output. So let's go with the Spectrum to make it all actually work. And then we have something heavy and metal, not the rock and roll type. But... Number plates, oh my God, did they get better and better. So we've got Queensland, the Sunshine State. Fantastic. Uh, bring up places to put things here. Oh, we've got a, a duplicate of that one. I guess that was front and back from the same car. That is awesome. And that one. Doesn't say where it was from. I'm guessing also Australia. Is there a. Let's just double check on the letter again. Oh, it doesn't. The letter doesn't say where it's from. So, Jason, if you can let me know where that one's from, I'll be fascinated to know. I can tell you it was made on the 18th of November 1997 at 1426 because there is printing on the back, so you can see that or not. Uh, AL.NC825B. Let me know, Jason, where's that one from? I'm fascinated to know. I can scribble on the back of it then. I'm running out of space in there. And finally, and this is absolutely awesome, we've got a Spectrum, uh, I'm trying to get this into light, a Spectrum keychain. Rubbery with little rubber buttons on it, three dimensional. That is so, so, so cool. That is amazing. I love that. Thanks, Jason. That's brilliant. And do you know what? I'm going to use this bag to death because that is the coolest thing ever in a massively nerdy kind of way. But that's, that's just me all over, isn't it? <laughs> massively nerdy, but very, very cool. Well, almost cool. So amazing. Thank you. Thank you so very much. That is just awesome. I nearly missed one. I forgot to put this in the boot. I left it on the desk. This came from Andy from Cornish Car Collectors YouTube channel. Um, well, he's got an amazing collection of cars down in the southwest, including a pair of Rover 200 VIs, one of which is actually for sale at the moment. If you search on the internet, I'm sure you'll find it because there's only one for sale. I do think he's underpricing it. So if you want a bargain 200 VI, uh, go and grab that one because it's an amazing condition for the money. These are the uh, little catches or hinges that go on the side of the load space cover, the, the parcel shelf, because I'm missing those hinges on my 200 VI, so it makes it really awkward getting in and out of the boot. Again, I should have fitted these weeks ago, but I'm waiting to film this episode. So those are very handy indeed, so thanks very much indeed, Andy. Check out Cornish Car Collector's channel, um, Pentor Cars, also known as. Lots of fun stuff, adventures in, in well, retro cars. Right, let's delve back into the boot. Return to the trunk. Okay, we have got a smaller one here. And this one arrived ages ago. It's one of the first ones to arrive after the last episode. It's been sat here tantalizing me for ages. And it's from Boffo's Novelty Joke Shop on 10th Egg Street. And we've got um, 
the Ankmore Pork Post Office special delivery stamp on it. Uh, Ankmore Pork Postage Stamps. So I'm guessing this is from someone who knows I'm a Terry Pratchett fan. And I've been desperate to open this one, but until I film it, I don't open it. So it's just, oh, come on. More people send more stuff so I can open the cool things that are waiting in the car. <laughs> We've got postcards from Robin Scotland. This is a postcard from Brassica World. <laughs> um, the big cabbage, see the big cabbage. Hi Matt, thought you liked the enclosed ad to some of the fleet. Thanks so much for entertaining videos. My day you go, Rob in Scotland. Official Angmore, po Angmore Pork Post Office stamp with an ook. If you're a fan of uh, Terry Pratchett, you know what I'm on about. The big cabbage, yeah. Which is kind of in honor of like uh, the Australian coast road and Route 66 kind of roadside attractions. Now from Discord Emporium. The turtle moves, oh wow. <laughs> You've seen those fish stickers in the back of uh, cars. This is more, even more legitimate. The turtle moves. That is so cool. Official Discord merchandise. That look really cool on the back of the black V8 when that runs actually. I might save it for that in fact. That is really, really cool. Been wondering so long what was inside there. I'm a huge Terry Pratchett fan, so that is brilliant. <laughs> this is only on the last episode of Junk in the Trunk. Someone did actually send me out a bunch of Terry Pratchett on audio tape, which I've stored in here because Mrs. Furious lived up to her name when I tried to bring that into the house, but <laughs> that is currently stored in the garage. But that's where all the cassette players are anyway, because they're on the cars. So it works out well being in here. Right, let's see what else we've got lurking. This one says, Please do not bend. I'm guessing some brochures, perhaps. Let's open this carefully. Got a car magazine from, what year was this? 1991, November 1991. The exciting new cars Rover may not be allowed to make. And that on the front, that gray car with the disguise on it is quite clearly the Tomcat, the, the, uh, the Rover Coupe, as it became. And the car above looks an awful lot like, remember this is 1991, this looks like the 45 replacement that was in the works still when Rover shut down 15 years later. Let's head to page 78. God, magazine design is so different. So, what is it, um, 30 years later? 1991 to 2000, yeah. 30, I can't believe it's 30 years to 1991. But it looks like an old Victorian newsprint. And the, the tightly packed columns of small text. Whereas today, it's all so much e easier and more legible. God, the Peugeot 106, oh, wasn't that a cool car? So clean and French. New Honda Civic, is that the... EK shape. I always get a bit confused with the E numbers on Civics. Wow, that's cool. The Mitsubishi Space Wagon slash Space Runner being reviewed as a new model. <laughs> Blimey, there's an LKJ set right article in here. Okay, here we go. Exciting new cars Rover may not be allowed to build. Metro Bravo, 1994. Sporty looking three door hatch may replace the current Metro. Its roof incorporates detachable panels, effectively making it a convertible. That, I'm sure you don't need telling, did not go into production. So this is the 1994 Metro R6X, um, which it says is Bravo's rival as 1994 Metro successor bigger than the current car, it would use 1.1, 1.4 K-series, a tweaked GTI unit and a PSA diesel. Now, interesting to note though, that door line, that stepped window frame, just like an Alpha 145, very interesting, but again, didn't make it into production. This one though is very interesting. 1995, the Pathfinder. Sports utility, would use synchro hardware, um, two wheel drive and four wheel drive, and drive versions likely, powered by 1.8 and two litre engines. A Honda version is now possible. Of course, the Pathfinder didn't happen, but this is what led to the Freelander. You can even see elements of the Freelander side profile with that big B post in the center there. and. The here we have 1992, 
Tomcat, striking three-door coupe version of the Rover. So they're half right. <laughs> They've got the name right, but it's only a two-door, not a three-door. Uh, Rover 200 will have T-bar roof and 216 GTI, 220 GTI underbody hardware and similar specifications. They got all that right. And this one, Tracer 1992, convertible based on the 200-400 series, launched in the spring. We'll see the drop-top minis and metros before the end of the summer as well. Well, so they thought. There was a drop-top metro. I always thought it was an aftermarket thing. Well, oh, it was factory, wasn't it? I'd forgotten that. Rover 800, add hatch, notch back in autumn 91, add coupe in March 92, convertible painting possibility, range safe to 1995. Wow. Maestro Montego to be replaced by Rover 600, Project Synchro in 1993. This is fascinating stuff, actually. Here we go. 1993 MGD, a mid-engined MGD would use a 1.4 litre twin cam K series and cost less than, a, less than a Mazda MX-5. Has not yet been given a definite go-ahead. Of course, that was the MGF. Um, doesn't look a world apart from that, but the big Audi 80 style wraparound rear end did not make it into production though. 1994 MG V8, stunning looking rear drive V8 supercar based on Rover 800 platform, wow. Interior is opulent with lashings of leather and wood. That's incredible. 1992 MGB V8, which of course was the MGR V8, limited edition Roadster using heritage body shell. Fantastic, that is so interesting. Real trip down memory lane there. Oh wow, and that's uh, followed by 25 years ago, four, when was uh, 1986, 1966, 25 years ago, four drivers using a Mini and an Austin 1800 became the first men to cross Australia east to west through the inhospitable centre in a Mini and an Austin 1800. Wow. What a story. I'm going to be reading this one. Forget the current edition of Evo, I'll be reading that. That is so cool. Thank you. Oh, there's a letter, so I know who that's from. Oh, there is a letter, so I can see who it's from, and it's from Darren. Hello, Darren. Hi, Matt. Hope you find you well. I've been watching your videos for a while now, and only just dawned on me that we met a few years ago at Brands Hatch when you did a photo of my silver XJ40. We've spoken since. We did. Uh, <laughs> having sought out and come across the Enclosed magazine from November 91, I thought you might enjoy this as it has a lot of Rover content. An art article about the then new Crown Victoria. I missed that. I'll go back to that in a second. And the piece about the future of electric cars. Brilliant. Thanks, Darren. That's great. Right, let's look back into the trunk. Right, let's look back into the trunk. I've toyed with the idea of, of uh, greasing this, but it would ruin the atmosphere of the feature. Now this has come from Germany. Okay, Hanover, in fact. My goodness, there are a lot of number plates just here. <laughs> uh, two, four, so that's six number plates. Hi Matt, here are a few German number plates for my collection, for your collection. For some reason I have most of them twice so I can easily spare them, so thank you for that. Here's a short breakdown of which cars they came from. Right, so I hope you can use this in your collection. Enjoy the content, in particular the P6s. If you're up to me, we get more of those. We will do some more P6s soon, don't worry. Uh, all the best, Chris, aka Mighty Cat Mods. And he's got a beautiful Novola Blue Alpha 156 just there. Fabulous car, love them. Okay, so we've got details of each of the cars. WEZ69 uh, was on a dark metallic green Volvo V40 and then on a VW Passat. Okay, so that's one down. Then we have KREZ1969 was on a Alpha 147 1.6. Uh, quite a disappointing car after a 156. I'm doing this out of order. Um, yeah, 147 is a great car, but yeah, our 1.6 version after a 2-litre T-Spark is definitely going to be a bit of a come down. MZHT 103, a 1970s Volkswagen T2 bay window bus with a Westphalia camping. Sold it for nothing. Well, that was a mistake because they're worth a mint now. Absolute fortune. Now uh, this one, MGVN852, also on the same van. I guess it's registered at various times in... Not, I can't quite read where it's from because it's been stamped over. Stadmunch... Stad... Blah, gone. Then we've got Vi JJ89 on the metallic one point, Alpha 146 with the 1.7 Boxer in it. Oh, what a great car. It says you should never have sold it. I agree. Definitely worth hanging on to one of those if you can find one. A lot of good alphas in this collection, I have to say. Uh, MG Easy, Easy MG. Um, this was on uh, the uh, Nivola 
Azuro Novolo 156 2 litre T Spark with a dark blue Momo leather interior and wooden steering wheel. What a beautiful sounding car. K040056. This is a one day registration used to take the 147 T Spark home. Uh, at 2018. Oh, 8th of the 8th, 2018, I guess, on that date just there. Cool. Thank you so much. That is definitely a great addition to the number plate collection just there. The number plate wall is definitely filling out quite nicely this week. So thank you, Chris. That is absolutely brilliant. Okay, let's delve in once again. Okay, this time we've got, we've got a large parcel from sometime in the UK. Okay, it's in the it's a shame the recycling went yesterday. <laughs> it's in a Dickies box, but what is inside the Dickies box? Ooh, it's a Rogue 200 something. Hi Matt, love the channel. Looking forward to seeing more of the W123 Mercedes. That's a running theme actually. <laughs> it's, it seems to be a Rover 200 um, folder. Okay, this is, and I will have just cut out several minutes of me trying to wind this uh, padding off that because that's well protected. Rover 200 series corporate sales product directory. So this is what the salesman would have used to sell the car. Wow, this is pretty incredible. Proper ring binder of all the good stuff about it. Introduction. Warmly received by pundits and public alike, it's at its advanced world reveal in 1995 London Motor Show, the new 200 series will commence sales from December 1995. So this is older than that then. Uh, unusually, the range has been announced in full with a truly comprehensive engine choice of 4K series petrol units, two LCs, turbo diesels, together with a choice of three and five dot body styles and four trim levels. Uh, derivative availability will build up progressively from late 1995 until the Sporting 200 VI comes on stream in spring 1996. And the price range, here we go. The base model 214i 3-door, 9995. Rivaling, actually, Citroen ZX 1.4 Reflex, 9695. Peugeot 306 1.4, Golf 1.4, Escort Encore 1.4, and Astro 1.4 being the most expensive at 10,095. Then you've got the 214i 5-door, another 500 quid. The 214 SI 11,195. 214 SI 5-door, uh, 216 SI, um, I actually had a 216 SI three door, which would have been 12,195 when it was brand new. I can't remember what I paid for it. It was about two years old when I bought it, but its rivals were in the 1.6 Astra Sport three door, uh, Escort 1.6 SI, and the 306 XS, all of them being just over 12 grand. And the top of the range, um, 200 VI priced TBA, but the Golf GTI was 15 and a half grand, and the 306 S16 was 16.3. James, where did you find this from? This is amazing. Assertive profile, rear end conspicuity, and exterior dimensions. Conspicuity is a word you don't hear very often. I remember that really, really 1990s graphic effect, the, the, the shadow and relief graphic effect that is like a carved thing in the background of all the brochures. Oh, here we go. Interior, Young Rover Ambiance. Just as the exterior design of the new 200 extends Rover's sp special values for a new younger driver, so does the interior treatment succeed in blending the celebrated Rover to cabin ambience with a lively modern theme. Picking up the, on the exterior cues, the interior uses rounded forms to express friendly, protective nature of the car. These are complemented by the graphic treatments of details like the instrument binnacle, centre console and door trim fabric inside. So we have the Rubik's um, fabric pattern on the I and D models, the cashmere pattern on the SI, SLI, and the Norse on its own unique velour and duotone ash sports colorway for the VI. 200, the Bubble 200 was such a good car. Oh, it's got the 400 as well in there. Okay. Brilliant. Oh, that is so cool. That is such an amazing thing. For a Rover nerd like me, that is an astonishing thing. Thank you so much, James. That is brilliant. I'm sorry that's been sat on the passenger seat of the V8 Rover. 
for so long waiting for me to do this episode. Uh, we're gonna put this so it's clean and safe. Right, back into the trunk of the V8. I've only got two things left. So first of all, we so I'm gonna guess that this is a number plate. I'm not sure why I think that, but I just have a hunch. It says in the letter I just found in there, hi Matt, please find enclosed with this letter a number plate I found in the back of my carriage during a recent spring clean. It was and may still be attached to a Mercedes-Benz SLK 230. I had the pleasure of owning during the pandemic. It can't been sold, but the plate may still be roaming around Scotland. Um, came as a spare that the previous owner had made up. So this says, oh, okay, this is a IP14 address from the, the maker. Oh, great number plate for an SLK. Oh, 75 SLK, I mean, come on, if you're gonna buy an SLK, that's the plate you need. That is so cool, that's from Graham. Thank you very much indeed, Graham, that is brilliant. I don't know if I've got, I've got a couple of UK ones, but that's a really cool addition because it's just really, really cool. And I quite like a Mercedes anyway, so even better. And we've only got one item left in the trunk, which is quite lucky because the battery's about to go on the camera. And this one has come from New Zealand, wow. The lady in the post office did sound quite surprised that the last two things I picked up were, I think she said Germany and New Zealand. Now this has come from someone called Justin, who I'm gonna assume is the same Justin I've been talking to on email uh, for the last couple of months, because he, like me, has shipped Crown Victoria's an unlikely car to be shipping around the planet to his home in New Zealand. And he said he was sending something over, and this says, I'm trying to show his address on here, uh, Dash Designs, the ultimate dash covers. And it also says Ford Crown Victoria on the front as well. So this is not something we have very much in the UK. This is something I'm quite keen to give a try to. This is a dash top cover. It comes with, with like self adhesive Velcro and things. So this kind of Velcros over, there we go, the front of the dashboard to give you like a a slightly more warmer, nicer feel, and you can put things on there, don't slide off. It also protects the car from UV as well, so what a cool thing. So thanks, Justin. Um, Justin also has a Facebook group called New Zealand CVPI, so if you search that out, you can see his rather nice cars. That is so cool. Thank you, Justin, that's brilliant. It's dark and raining outside, so I won't fit this right now. I'll wait until the morning, but that will look awesome when that's on there. I've just even got a little logo on there, Dash Designs. <laughs> so thank you, Justin, that's brilliant. That's certainly an, an unusual accessory for the Crown Vic. That's not something many have got in this country, so that'll be quite a standout thing when we go to shows and stuff. That'll be certainly something with a difference on it. So thank you, that's the last box in the, in the trunk, I believe. Yep, that's everything. So thank you in so much for watching and thank you to everyone who has sent stuff in. I really do appreciate every single one of these items. It's all fantastic. Really cool, really fun, really amusing, really entertaining and enlightening and interesting as well. So if you've got stuff to send over to the, to the channel, the postcode is Furious Driving, PO Box 47. So if you have anything to send, oh, it's fun, good one. If you have anything to send over, number plates from around the planet, uh, car brochures, random items that are basically car related in some way, then yeah, bung them in the post to Furious Driving, Junk in the Trunk, PO Box 477 Aylesford, ME69 LE. The address is in the description below and we'll share it in the next one. When I first started doing this thing, so just not long after the pandemic, we did it every single month because there was lots of stuff coming in, but as we've kind of matured the, the, uh, the videos, we've slowed down, we just do it every now and then when enough stuff turns up and we've got enough to make a full video. And I think you'll agree, today's video was definitely worth waiting for. There is some really cool stuff. We've got, I mean, come on, these number plates are amazing. The Spectrum, that was astonishing. Thank you so much for that. The Rover 200 sales book, the magazines, the brochures, the Kevlar anti-burn things, the bits of Rover, bits of Volvo. Oh, there's so much stuff. The Australian number plates, German number plates. I'm looking around just in amazement at the stuff that's come in. This has been a really, really good episode so thank you so much to everyone who's put stuff in the post thank you for watching like and subscribe as always thank you very much indeed and if you want to go and support the channel and don't forget furiousdriving.co.uk we find fridge magnets of pretty much the entire fleet stickers t-shirts hats mugs like this one and more and more being added all the time when i can basically get around to doing it in amongst everything else so thank you for watching there'll be more videos over on the main channel very soon 
possibly some more videos on here if I get five minutes to do anything, but definitely lots and lots more things coming over the coming weeks and months and years in fact. So thank you for watching and see you again soon.